I mean, when you get, when you put your face out there and you are the brand, literally the sky is the limit. So it's up to you to decide how do I want to present myself? And that's a really fun and powerful opportunity for anybody that's considering positioning themselves as the face or an expert. Look into his eyes. They're the eyes of a man obsessed by success. Eyes that mock our sacred institutions. Bedroom eyes, they call them in a bygone day. Sex desire is the most powerful of human desires. When driven by this desire, men develop keenness of imagination, courage, willpower, persistence, and creative ability unknown to them at other times. So strong and impelling is the desire for sexual contact that men freely run the risk of life and reputation to indulge in. When harnessed and redirected along other lines, this motivating force maintains all of its attributes of keenness of imagination, courage, etc which may be used as powerful creative forces in literature, art, or in any other profession or calling, including, of course, the accumulation of riches. Napoleon Hill. Hey there, peeps. This is Michelle Nedelec, your mistress in business, helping you get it up and keep it up. And I am super excited to have you here today because I have the most amazing guest, Tristan. Tristan, thank you so much for being here with us today. Oh my gosh, Michelle, I'm so excited to be here. And just that intro is golden, absolute gold. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> so tell us a bit about yourself. Give us a highlight of who you are and what you do for business. Yeah, absolutely. So I am a recently Forbes featured brand strategist for the wellness and beauty industry. So if anybody's like, what the hell is a brand strategist? Basically, my job is to come into your business and help you look at growth through the lens of brand. So everything that I do is about making sure that you are differentiated in the marketplace, making sure that you are well positioned and making sure that you're in a place to build a true cult like following community tribe, whatever the word that resonates with you. We want to build that because that's what creates that long-term business growth that people are after. So if you're in a saturated industry, which most people are because hello, welcome to 2023, the business world is crazy noisy. I'm the girl that's going to help you to stand out and make sure that the right people find you no matter your setting. Nice. Love it. So how did you get into branding as a thing? Yeah. So artistically grew up just being obsessed with all things, graphic design, illustration, found it as a really cool way to communicate with the world. But then life kind of took me down a path of looking for a career that was maybe a little bit more stable because I don't know if you've heard the old adage, the poor artist. Well, that scared the shit out of me growing up. So I kind of went down a different path, which took me to a graduate degree and really getting some great corporate experience leading teams and ultimately transitioned into business coaching because I had ran my own business for about four years and was really noticing that people were struggling to communicate the value of what they were doing. And in an online space, if you launch a business, if you get your hands dirty, you'll learn really quickly that if you can't communicate clearly and if you can't find your people and make it easy for them to find you, you're gonna have a hell of a time. So that just got me really interested in communications. And in the era that we are in right now, brand is just the best way to communicate your value as a business and to really build something unique build an experience that people want to be a part of so that led me into starting wild woman house which is a brand strategy and design agency and here we are today i love it so give us an idea of, of what is the difference between a personal branding and say like a corporate branding Yeah, absolutely. So I would venture to say that corporate branding and making something sticky, making something that people are going to resonate with is tricky. Whereas a personal brand is something that people can so easily connect to because it's built around your identity. So for example, Tristan Thibodeau as the brand strategist, well, that's my personal brand. I get to do speaking engagements. I get to be featured. I get to have these epic conversations and it's all under my name, my identity, my perspective, my expertise. And that's ultimately what a personal brand comes down to is having a stance about whatever it is that you do, expressing parts of your personality that you wanna be deemed as valuable and then building relationships through your name, your face, et cetera. 
a corporate brand, the reason I said it's more tricky is because it doesn't necessarily always have a face. If we think about the Pepsis, the Coca-Colas, et cetera, those huge corporate brands, those are easy to name. Those require so much time and attention to be able to build a connection with a community. And that's really where brand comes into play. Not to say it's not important for personal branding. It 100% is. But with personal branding, there's so much more fluidity in terms of how you show up and the evolution of a personal brand is just the evolution of you as an expert. So it's a lot more straightforward, whereas a corporate brand is something that you have to reinforce over and over and over and over again to build the recognition and the visibility and the awareness that big businesses are after. So I can keep going into detail, but how does that sum it up for everybody? <laughs> <laughs> totally makes sense. And I think that it was kind of the advent of uh, Instagram really that made a personal brand a thing because mm -hmm. prior to that, nobody really wanted to know who you were. <laughs> it was like, well, what is your product? <laughs> what do you do? And you know, I don't really want to know, which is why I think a lot of the kind of, you know, 40 and up I'll say, are having a difficult time with this whole idea because they don't know, still don't know what is too much information, <laughs> TMI, and, you know, <laughs> yeah. and then, um, that so fast. And then, and then you show up in a bustier and it's like, but that's not too much. That's awesome. <laughs> yep, absolutely. And it's, you know, there is a lot of deconditioning I think has to happen when you didn't grow up in the era of TikToks and Instagrams. I kind of was on the verge of, you know, when Instagram became really big, I was early starting my professional career. So it's kind of one of those things where you grow up seeing it, you grow up seeing the possibilities and you just kind of get comfortable divulging more, but there is a big deconditioning curve that has to happen for somebody that maybe didn't necessarily emerge professionally when those apps were growing. And there's something to be said about learning to speak in your own voice. And that's something that a lot of personal brands struggle with because we're so trained to be professional, keep it clean, keep it straight laced, especially if you've worked in corporate or maybe there was more of a conservative culture. I mean, when you get, when you put your face out there and you are the brand, literally the sky is the limit. So it's up to you to decide how do I want to present myself? And that's a really fun and powerful opportunity for anybody that's considering positioning themselves as the face or an expert within their business. Love it. So I want to talk to you about who you work with, because I noticed that when I decided to become a personal brand that promoted my company, it, 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 the delineation, all of a sudden it was like the, the sky cleared and the angels sang and it was like, oh, okay, now it makes sense that this is me and I have all of this, you know, this train of <laughs> things behind me that aren't necessarily representative of the company. The company can be more conservative. I can go crazy and it becomes okay. We can separate the two, um, mm -hmm. but not everybody's a special kind of crazy like me. So <laughs> who do you work with then? And how does that become kind of pertinent to them? Yeah, so I work in the beauty and wellness spaces and from a business, I'll just give you the full the full rundown from a yeah. business perspective, my decision to move into beauty and wellness was a strategic one because those industries are projected to hit three tri three trillion and above by 2025. So I saw there's a hungry like consumers are hungry for new innovations and new startups and new brands and beauty and wellness the industry as of an evaluation is going to continue to grow and i wanted a piece of that pie personally i come from a background of beauty and wellness a lot of my academic training is in wellness and then i grew up in a salon my mom's a cosmetologist so i grew up sweeping hair putting products on the shelves helping her however i had to and from a selfish standpoint, I feel like those two industries are really just such a fun way to explore what it is to be human and express yourself. So that's why I chose to get into beauty and wellness. But what I do specifically is work with a combination of service based entrepreneurs and product based entrepreneurs. So that looks a little different based on the way that their business is set up. But what I do is come in and I mean, even with beauty, it is just so so saturated with TikTok. Never has it ever been easier to launch something new, to get it in front of eyeballs. And Gary Vaynerchuk talks about this all the time. It takes one video, one video to turn you from nobody into somebody. And that could not be more true with beauty. We see startups happening all the time. And that's amazing. 
that shows you there's a lot of opportunity, but it also shows you there's a lot of noise and there's a lot of consumer disinterest in terms of seeing something that's already existed. So when I come into a business, what I'm looking to do is again, going back to that differentiation strategy. How do we disrupt an extremely noisy industry and find that gap that you can fill and just build a cult-like community around you? That's gonna give you the longevity that you need. I'm not interested in having you be a, you know, some sort of hero product that gets on the shelves and then disappears after a couple years. We want you to last. We want you to have those legs to where you can expand and grow and scale. And so when I come in, I'm looking at the market and I'm looking at the industry through that perspective of where are the gaps, where should we not even try playing, and then how do we talk to your people very specifically. I love that. Well, and that's an incredible gift because I found um, in talking to people like you, you ask things in a different way and all of a sudden people start speaking in a different way and it's like okay that that's your thing and and you know it because they spark everybody around them sparks and but it's getting to that point in that conversation that most people won't get there on their own mm -hmm. so absolutely love it so is there kind of areas or arenas like in the products side of things that are kind of more relevant right now does it matter if they're more relevant Ooh. Fun question. I love that. So in terms of, I'll just focus on beauty because that one, you know, with wellness, it's, it's a lot more service-based. And so I'm going to focus more on beauty right now because there are some really cool opportunities that I want to share with people. So first and foremost, in terms of product trends that are really big with consumers right now, anything skincare, anything lip care. We saw that blow up during the pandemic. That's because people were going out, they weren't wearing makeup. All of a sudden we took a deeper interest in taking care of our skin and having that shine through more than powdering yourself and just drips and layers and war paint. Like we have really transitioned as a beauty culture away from that style. But in terms of gaps, market opportunities, think about anything that is stigmatized. And by that, I mean um, severe acne, uh, feminine hygiene, anything that has to do with people not wanting other people to know that they have that problem. We are seeing a huge resurgence in terms of reclaiming those, reclaiming those stigmatized arena of wellness and beauty. And one of the best examples of this is with acne, we've seen a huge uprising in terms of like star face. Do you know those like pimple patches that look like stars? That's such a great case study because what they did is they took an issue that most people are embarrassed by and that most people have tried to cover up their entire life or get rid of. And they're saying, no, no, no. Now we're gonna put something that draws attention to it in a cute, fun way that you're treating your acne, but you're also saying, this is human, this is normal. I'm gonna walk around with a star on my face and, and I'm not gonna care because this is me taking care of myself, right? So that destigmatization of previously stigmatized issues that consumers have, there's so much opportunity for that. There's also tremendous opportunity for women of color. Any sort of product or service specifically for women of color, 17% of women, I'm like a spew, I'm like a leaky faucet right now. 17% of, of women of color say that they can confidently find products in the stores that match their skin, match their concerns. Well, what about the 80, whatever other percent of people that can't find what they're looking for? That right? tells me huge market opportunity, lots of opportunity for disruption and lots of opportunity for new players and challenger brands to come into the space and serve that underserved population. So I, I, I you know, anybody listening that's like, ooh, 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 go for it. Those are the arenas that are just wide open for disruption, wide open for challenger brands. I love that. Well, and it it talks to the the issue so much of where there's a problem, there's an opportunity. And so many people are like, oh no, the, the world's coming to an end. It's it's gonna crash. And half of us are going, yay. That means there's opportunity there. <laughs> it seems really contradictory and kind of insane, but it's so true. And I see it more in American stores. I don't know why. Um, and it could it could be because Canadian stores just don't have a section for um, you know darker skinned. I'm gonna say makeup, mm -hmm. and it all looks like it's made for you know 
very white Irish people. <laughs> it's like, and I go, okay, great. I got my zone, but what about everybody else? And what about right. when you get a tan, you can't go into the darker colors and, and have any varieties there. Um, so I think there's a huge opportunity there. And I have noticed too, that all of the makeup almost for kind of white skin is super expensive. And mm -hmm. all the other stuff is super underpriced, mm -hmm. like underpriced. And, uh, it's like, I can't believe that nobody's gone in there and gone, Hey, like what is going on with this? This mm -hmm. is huge opportunities. Love, 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 love. So can you <laughs> give us an example of one of your Cinderella stories, one of your clients. Oh, yes, I absolutely can. So this is a wellness brand that I worked with last year. She works in the functional nutrition and hormone, uh, female hormone reproductive health arena of wellness. Previously, she was working as a solopreneur under somewhat of a personal brand. She had a brand name, but it was her. It was only her. And she was getting really burnt out, was really frustrated and had been kind of stalking me for a couple of years, you know, lurking behind the scenes, sometimes reaching out and asking questions. And what I gained from her is she had this tremendous vision to take her company global and just literally couldn't get the structure out of her head, couldn't get the ideas out of her head. And that happens with so many business owners. We have these gigantic aspirations, but we almost kind of need somebody to come in and like activate the release of those ideas and kind of activate the full scope and in a plan that can bring that to life. And so she came to me kind of like, I'm done with this solopreneur game. I have students in the programs that I teach from all over the world. I'm recognized by national institutions in terms of the quality of the education I provide. I'm ready to go global with this. I'm ready to go big. And so what ended up happening is over the course of about a year, and it, you know, a year sounds like a long time, but to think about all of the internal structure that has to happen to transition from a personal brand into more of a corporate business facing identity. Essentially, what we did is we took her from a solopreneur into a full fledged team of educators and experts to where she's now publishing scientific articles. She's taken her company into new countries. She is one of the top resources. Her institution is one of the top resources for the type of education that she provides and the go to expert for functional health practitioners looking to become certified as a hormone specialist. So it's it's really just I, I mean, the Cinderella story here is not so much about the business entity changing. It's about the transformation she went through because she has told me numerous times and just I can feel it off of her whenever we talk the the ceo that she stepped into during that transition she runs her business completely differently now and it's just like go bad bitch go you know what i mean <laughs> right. it's just the best most fulfilling feeling from me being such a strong advocate for other female entrepreneurs to see somebody own that bigness and own that power and go for it and to be able to be behind the scenes saying, yeah, you should absolutely do that. I know you're scared, but go for it. And to have her be where she is now is just, it's one of my favorite stories to tell. And it like gives me goosebumps to think about it. <laughs> that is awesome. I love it. So what are some of the stumbling blocks that somebody might be having while they're listening to this and going, oh my God, Tristan, I need you so badly. <laughs> <laughs> I think first and foremost, understanding what your brand is. And that is a, in many ways, philosophical topic to touch on because I think we've been trained as a culture, but also as business owners to think of your brand as kind of like a topical asset, something that sits on the surface. It's, you know, a lot of people think of it as your logo, your color palette, the way your website looks, your overall vibe, which yes, but that's kind of what happens as a result of your brand functioning. And if you wanna think about it any other way, Think about your brand as the sum of all the experiences, the emotions, the thoughts, the feelings that somebody will have when they encounter your business, when they encounter who you are, how you show up, how you speak, your perspective. Brand touches absolutely everything. And when it does touch everything and it's done really well, that's when you have a really strong company culture that retains talent. That's when you have this environment of collaboration and innovation and thought leadership from a company standpoint, from a community standpoint, that's when you have people coming in and saying, I am this 
and I resonate with this, for example, wild woman house, I have people coming in and saying, I want to be a wild woman. I am a wild woman. I've been one my whole life. It's an identity that people can grab onto. And that may not necessarily be possible in terms of giving your community a name for every single business that exists, but it's that resonance, it's that identity, it's that trust and that feeling of this business gets me, this person understands me. And because of that, I'm going to keep coming back, I'm going to pay attention, I'm going to give them my time, energy, and hopefully money, right, and the exchange of value. And so that ecosystem that you create with your brand is one of the most important things to wrap your head around before you even think strategy. Start by shifting your perspective of what brand is, and it will change the way that you do business on a daily basis. I love it. So peeps, if you're struggling with your messaging, if what you're saying isn't hitting on target and getting the results you're looking for, all that kind of fun stuff. Absolutely. So I know our listeners are going to want more from you. How do they start their journey with you? Absolutely. So guys, just go to the Wild Woman House website. It is Wild Woman House Woman W O W O M N and then house spelled the fancy way H A U S because we're bougie over here. <laughs> but go there, start there. You will find everything. You'll find all the links to our socials. You'll be able to pick your poison. We have a podcast called the Wild Woman Hotline. You'll be able to listen to that. And I'm giving you all the things so that you can kind of pick your path. We also have what's called the built to scale assessment. And this is something that I took a lot of time to build and construct. I wanted it to be as customizable as possible. So you take a five minute assessment, it gives you completely customized results and it tells you which aspect of your brand is the weak link. What do you need to focus on? What do you need to strengthen? And then based on that result, you'll get a mini workshop where I teach you more about that topic and give you additional resources to help you get started strengthening it. So all of those things, are on the website. <laughs> awesome. And of course, all of Tristan's links will be in the show notes. So you can just scroll down and go and find all of those things. I love it. That is absolutely awesome. So tell me, what is your favorite part of business for you? The people I get to meet, honestly, it can be lonely being, you know, a work from Homer. And I think a lot of people have found freedom and a lot of people have found security in that. And those things are definitely true. I am both an extrovert and a homebody. So I, I love it. But getting to have these types of conversations, getting to meet people that your path may not have ever crossed. You know, yesterday I had a connection call with somebody that's in the industry and we, for the first 30 minutes, we just, you know, shot the shit and chatted and got to know each other and you build a relationship. And, and what business has taught me, and this is not revolutionary, this is not anything new that you're going to hear, but your network and how valuable that is and the opportunities that come from it and just the relationships you can build and the support you can give to other people. For me, there's really no better feeling than having somebody come to me and say, hey, I'm looking for this, do you offer it? And, you know, maybe not, maybe I don't always offer exactly what they're looking for. But being able to say, you know, I know somebody and they're good and I trust them knowing that you can pass on that support, even if you're not the right person is just so fulfilling to me to know that no matter who comes my way, they're going to be sent at least in a better direction than when they, <laughs> when they found me. Right. <laughs> awesome. I love it. So, and I also get to ask, yeah, at what point in life did you know you're a special kind of crazy enough to think that you could become an entrepreneur? Um, the second I popped out of the room, I'm pretty sure I have uh, been labeled as the troublemaker, the problem child, the shit stirrer in my family. And I think that just comes from my desire to like look at things and ask how can this be done better or why are we doing it this way? That got me into a lot of trouble when I was younger, but as an entrepreneur, it has taught me so much about questioning the way things are done and looking at it as, is there an opportunity to do things better? But my whole life, you know, honestly having trouble with authority having trouble being told what to do especially when you know you are creative and you have your own ideas so that's kind of what got me into entrepreneurship is like i can do this better i think so i'm gonna do it on my own <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> yeah and coming from a long line of entrepreneurs doesn't hurt too so i kind of saw that modeled for me at a young age which was really nice nice i love it you have been absolutely awesome any last words for our peeps oh my goodness 
I always say go after the biggest version of your vision and this, you know it's that old adage of you shoot for the moon you'll fall amongst the stars. I think a lot of people play small and that has to do with just you know how competitive things can feel or how maybe you don't feel qualified enough but just the desire alone to go out and make an impact and contribute hang your hat on that and shoot for the stars shoot for the moon because that big vision that you have in your head of you know the global company for example can become possible even if you're a solopreneur now if you're feeling that pull follow it listen to it go for it and you will figure it out and it will surprise you it will be better than you thought it could be so you are your own worst enemy and don't hold yourself back i love it thank you so much for your time i know how valuable it is and i appreciate it thank you this is a blast awesome Peeps, this is Michelle and I like your mistress in business. Thank you for being here today. Be sure to subscribe to the show and your favorite podcast and share it with your friends because we love helping entrepreneurs get a little action. Thank you for listening to the Little Blue Pill for Business podcast with your mistress in business, Michelle Nedelec. Why are you still here? Go to littlebluepillforbusiness.com and get your goodies. If you enjoyed the show, be sure to share it with somebody else that you know would enjoy getting it up in business after you subscribe to the podcast, of course, so you won't miss any future episodes. Now, check the notes for links. Oh, and only tell your wife if she's into this, you know, entrepreneurship. And I'll see you both on the other side.